I'm glad that Jeff has broken the ice uh, in terms of using uh, slides, and I hope I can make my own visible to you. Can you see them? Yes. Great. Uh, so uh, the topic I want to uh, discuss about is the specific effect COVID-19 has on making the world a much more digital place and what that means. So picturally, here is uh, the enemy, but maybe the enemy has more effects than just making some of us very sick. Uh, I would first want to explain why I think this is not just another event, but possibly a disruptive event, and would then go on illustrating why it possibly might be beneficial, but of course there's no free lunch, uh, so we have to talk about the cost side of it as well. So first, why might COVID-19 be a critical moment in the digitalization of the world? Let me uh, start from the idea that uh, the critical part is not technically speaking innovation. Everything we now see being used more intensely has been there before, but with the virus, the physical proximity of larger groups is now out of question and the technology that we had possibly before is now our only way out. And let me illustrate that with my own work. So this is what my typical day would have looked like before COVID. I was running experiments in a physical lab and this is what it looks like today. So I had to learn Python, HTML to run experiments online and we can go on doing our job. Or the other part of my job, uh, before COVID-19, we had a beautiful meeting room. We would have been sitting together very often in this room and would inspire each other. Impossible these days, we do what we currently also are doing. We are using Zoom. Uh, and it's not confined to my personal experience. We see an outburst in e-learning, e-health, Many people no longer see the doctor in person, but give him a call or a video call, or as you certainly know, even the Pope goes digital with click to pray. So we have to use electronic substitutes. Is that good or can it be a good thing that now we have no longer a choice, we are forced to do that? I again go to my personal experience first because there I have firsthand evidence, so to speak, uh, that we now run our experiments online means we have a technology that's much more flexible than the one we had before. So for instance, we now can integrate animations into the experiments. More interesting from an experimental perspective, we can access a much wider subject pool. So we were caged with our university students that we could bring to our physical lab. Now we can bring in a representative sample, we can stratify samples, we can go to foreign countries. So we currently are running an experiment online in Pakistan, something that we wouldn't have conceived of before. We have a much better curated subject pools because now we can uh, team up with survey companies. They know much more about their subjects than we ever would. And uh, last but not least, they're much cheaper, uh, the subjects we are can get and therefore we have a chance to run considerably bigger subject pools that gives us much better evidence because the statistics are much more reliable. Online meetings, same story. Uh, we all talk about the environment. Uh, the best thing for the environment that's happened in this decade is of course COVID-19 because it has stopped tons of things uh, that were polluting the environment, including commute. Uh, I used to sit on the train almost every day uh, since more than half a year I haven't been on a train. Uh, there is a good news for, for the many young scientists who have children. Uh, the work-life balance for them becomes considerably easier. I'm running a seminar series. I would not have thought I could bring in just for us colleagues from the best places in the US. I just dropped them an email and all of them said, oh, wonderful, why don't we do that? Former PhD students, once they have left my institute, usually they are no longer on our radar screen. Uh, now they are 
participating with the group as long as for them uh, this is a good thing to do. And probably most importantly, there's an interesting convergence between presenting stuff and collaboration. And there is a blend between the two forms of scientific work, which makes us much more productive. More abstractly speaking, what does digitalization have as benefits? Distant costs, distance cost is minimal. Therefore, there's a potential for worldwide reach. Agglomeration advantages become much less pronounced. So you'll no longer have to live in the big cities to be part of the game. Uh, as one of the colleagues once nicely put it, you can have proximity without contiguity. So you can have friends on the other side of the globe. On an economic side, marginal cost on most internet services or digital services is very small. So that adding another user is usually much cheaper online than it would have been offline. You can therefore offer your services to less wealthy environments. You can be more inclusive. And most interestingly, you can you have scope for tailor-made solutions for much smaller fractions of the population because you can reach much wider parts of the population uh, if you have to. On the market entry side, there is a benefit because uh, the cost of market entry is considerably lower. For many digital services, what you need is computer literacy and a decent command of English. Also, marketing becomes easier and cheaper. Therefore, you can much more quickly build a larger user base. We know from network externalities that this is how most of the big businesses these days actually have become big. And on the horizon, we have the possibility uh, that digital traces that we uh, leave by using digital services are themselves data that can be used in productive ways. Uh, so again, going back to my own domain teaching, uh, we can see which of our students have had a hard time with what we have been offering to them and therefore uh, we can be much better in the way how we present ourselves to them, or we can target subgroups of our students with tailor-made uh, interventions, so to speak. Same on the e-health side, we have much, we have increasingly better markers for health risk, and therefore there's scope for personalized medicine, uh, for instance, in cancer treating, this seems to be one of the most promising developments uh, that we see. There is I said it at the outset, no free lunch, and uh, my topic is clearly no exception. Most of the cost is on the distributional side, and this way we link back to things we have been discussing in this group in several ways over the last two days. Uh, let me stick to my topic, but address the distributional concerns. Uh, again, looking around, not for my research associates, of course, but uh, already at university, uh, hardware access can be a concern. Uh, you need, if you do online schooling, you should have a computer for every member of the household that is in parallel having schooling. That's something which is not for nothing. And uh, the less wealthy households may just not have that. And then uh, they lose out on education. Uh, and something that even uh, mattered for me, the fact that I hopefully can now undisturbed talk to you is only due to the fact that I had to vamp up our house in terms of upload speed, because it turned out that for the ways how we use the internet, we need just better connections. And not everybody has them. Going beyond the physical, uh, there is a distributional concern in terms of education. You need computer literacy to really embrace the benefits. Uh, not everybody may need Python as I do, but Keynote or Photoshop or so, may be quite helpful. And we have an increasing education and age gap here, uh, which is something that may make us worry. And at the next level, if what we really think we can achieve by increasing digitization is that we get more and more people up to speed to no longer be employed, but be self-employed or employers themselves, uh, then you need and a spirit that's entrepreneurial, uh, you must be able to cope with this environment where change is ubiquitous and you need a 
certain spirit of playfulness, uh, this are character traits that some of the youngsters may well have, but uh, you may not take them for granted. The next distributional point uh, that is to be concerned ties into things Gustavo uh, Benis was uh, talking about yesterday. Uh, on the internet, the typical business model is not, no longer service for money, but service for data. And then you may wonder, what is the data being used for? Uh, and here we should understand a bit of machine learning uh, and see that the money comes from better and better predicting individual choices and this gives us a potential for, gives those who have access to that data and to those tools, a potential for uh, generating monopoly power. Uh, they customize offers that are too good to reject and thereby have a chance for near perfect price discrimination, which allows the powerful firms to even better exploit those who use their services. On the educational side, you may argue we see a need for behavioral adaptation. We must learn whom to trust and when. Risks are less visible. Cooperation itself may be something uh, that has to be relearned. And something I only have time to touch upon is there's also a challenge for regulation because in the past, geography was the source, the, the prime source of regulatory power. Uh, and that meant we had nation states that were sovereign. Uh, now, these days, uh, this gets less and less relevant. And also uh, the social fabric behind the nation state uh, is dissolving. And instead of the traditional media uh, that states had some say on, we get the social media and the echo chamber problems uh, so that uh, the power base of the nation state uh, may, uh, may, may probably not disappear, that's unlikely, but may erode and may make it more difficult for states to achieve normative goals they and probably we with them care about. So let me end on uh, this sentence. Uh, I would not want to argue that this shock is beneficial, period, but there's a nice saying, a catastrophe is an opportunity too precious to miss. And I think in this spirit, every challenge is an opportunity and we should hope that one day the picture with, with, with which I have started uh, that COVID forces digitalization upon us uh, will mean that the danger is away but we have the benefits from digitalization. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gustav. Well, it's a fantastic speech, very optimistic. We need this hope, this optimism, and maybe we can use this chance to change, really. <laughs>